Hello everybody, I'm Serta and welcome to Satisfactory. I have put a few hours into this game and thoroughly enjoyed it. There are a lot of features in Satisfactory that the game doesn't exactly make too obvious. Uh, these features help you to explore uh, and organize and speed up your factory building. I am going to give you my top 30 most valuable tips to help you on your Satisfactory journey. So, let's get stuck in. When you start a game for the first time, it doesn't matter which biome you decide to start in, you're going to need to find resources. You have a scanner, you hold down V, and you can choose limestone, iron ore, or copper ore. Mainly, you want to look for iron ore. That's the most important resource in the early game. So, choose it, click. Now, if you have a look down there, you'll see uh, we're actually told where they are, but they're also up on the compass at the top. And that will guide us to where we need to go. And we know that that is about 289 meters away. So we'll go there and we'll set up our factory. Over time, as you progress through the game, new resources will be added to your scanner and you will be able to look for them. That also includes uh, eventually getting another scanner, which you'll be able to produce. That will allow you to also search for hard drives and uh, those little power slugs that you are going to need quite a lot of. Hello, beautiful iron. Oh. Hello, hog. Oh dear. So in the early game, you are going to want to explore quite a bit and you're going to want to get around. To do that, you can use ramps and that will get you to high areas and maybe help you avoid some nasty creatures. And once you've finished with those ramps, you can simply delete them. Later on in the game, you will have access through the awesome shop to additional tools like ladders and catwalks that will also make getting to higher places pretty easy. And as time goes by, travel options become easier too. There's fall damage in the game. You can fall from an extreme height without dying if your health bar is full. So let's see how high I can get. And I'm going to drop. And this should leave me with about half a bar of health left. I will heal up as long as I don't fall off anything again or get attacked. Well, I should live to fight another day. As early as possible, find some mycelia and unlock fabric so you can get the parachute. And that will help you survive falls because you can then just float from place to place. It also helps getting around the map. And to research the fabric, you would need 25 mycelia, 100 biomass, and you'll get that fabric and then you can go into your equipment workshop and down here your parachute will need 20 fabric some cable and you can get that parachute and that's your first real way around later on you'll get the jetpack and also the hover pack in the early game you're going to need a lot of leaves and biomass stuff and you're going to have to gather that by hand so instead of spamming the e key as you're running around you could just look at what you want to grab, hold down the E key, and then run around and it automatically picks up without you having to constantly hit E. It certainly saves a lot of uh, effort in hitting that E key much easier just to hold it down and run around. And you collect quite a lot of biomass that way. Now you are going to be running around collecting a lot of biomass and wood. You're going to need to feed it into your hub's uh, biomass generators or build biomass generators and put stuff in there. Now, you could just put leaves in there, but uh, leaves will get chewed through very quickly and it's not an efficient fuel. So, save your leaves, go to the crafting bench in your hub and go down to where it says biomass leaves. And you can craft your leaves into biomass, which is a much more efficient fuel. Now that's for early game. Uh, we can do that with the wood as well. And that will also turn it into biomass. So bear in mind, those are two recipes. Different inputs that give you uh, the same output. So now we have a whole bunch of, of biomass, which is a much more efficient fuel than just leaves and wood. We can now uh, put our biomass into our biomass burner. And as you can see, it doesn't go down quite as fast as the leaves did. Now, as you progress, you will get a better biomass and that would be solid biofuel. 
that will go down even slower so that's an even more efficient fuel and then yeah but as you as you go through the game uh, your energy needs are met with much better types of supply you're going to be doing a lot of handcrafting in the early game and it is really a pain in the butt to sit with your finger on the crafting button and clicking and just holding it there while things craft much easier solution come in here tap on the space bar and let it run obviously nothing happens if you leave the crafting bench but while you're in the crafting bench you can do stuff and if you want to change the recipe click on something else tap the space bar and it just carries on crafting it saves a lot of time so if you're doing a lot of hand crafting like you've got a 281 ore that you want to convert to iron ingots well hit the space bar go make yourself some coffee when you get back it'll be done you can split stacks in your inventory so if i go to e let's say i want a second biofuel generator i can take that out now if i go over here go into my inventory i can right click and it'll split it okay so that splits it in half but suppose i want to split it into specific numbers well all i do is hold down the right mouse button and then i can come in here and i can change the amount so we wanted a stack of 20 for example that's going to split it into 20 and 61 split and there it is so very handy you'll notice at the bottom of the screen there's a hot bar that hot bar has 10 slots and there are 10 potential hotbars so if you held down alt and turned your middle mouse wheel you would see you would go through the 10 categories so that's the right alt button and the mouse wheel and you can change between those hotbars which will definitely help you to find things that you need and get them down fast so how does the how do the hotbars work well if you go into your build menu and you go into power uh let's change something let's go and put this one on number one so if you want to change something if you want to put something in a in a specific spot on your hotbar you hover over the item and you press the number that you want to assign it to so that is now the power line and i have conveyors in part two i have manufacturers in number three and probably should change this but yeah this is just for demonstration purposes and then to access them i just hit the number so if i wanted a conveyor there we go and i have a conveyor to make things easier instead of always hitting your your build button uh, you'll notice there's a category so constructors and assemblers are in one category when you assign something to the hotbar for example there's our constructor you can actually scroll through the category by tapping the E button. Right now, there are only two items in this category, but there you go. We can scroll between them. And if you want to see what's in the category and select them, hold down the E button and you can select any of the items that are in that category. The more items, the more items there will be in this radial menu. The game has a world grid. So if we pick up a foundation, and we move it around you will see that uh, it can move freely but if you hold down the control button it snaps and that is snapping to the world grid now you do want to do this because it also helps between factories so that your factories match up and it's easy to join them together and as you can see these two join together now there is a one meter gap over here that's because uh, it jumps up in one meter increments so when you do your first base foundation use a four or two meter foundation there's a funny thing with the one meter foundation so let's put down a four meter foundation connected to the world grid we put down a one meter foundation connected to the world grid and then we'll just put another two meter foundation on top of that you'll see that there's a very strange kind of not one meter difference between the two so yeah there's a there's a strange thing with the one meter foundations they kind of they leave you with this half meter gap whereas this one here using the four meter foundations between two different structures i could take a one meter ramp now put it there 
and it matches up perfectly and I can carry on building. But on this one, if I put a one meter foundation down, as you can see, it doesn't match up. So there's a half meter or so difference. That is why you don't use one meter foundations as your base foundations when you're snapping to the world grid. You can change the build mode for various items. So if I was to take this and uh, hold down R, I can build vertical or I could zoop. Now, zoop is the horizontal version of vertical. So if I was to build default, I would build one. But I can tap that, go back to zoop, and then I can build 10 foundations out. And if I'm feeling really cool, I could tap it again, tap R. Now I'm going vertical and I can build vertical. And there we go. We can build platforms very, very quickly this way. There are different items like also pipes where you can change the build mode. So you can make your pipes look a little bit neater when elevating them. Uh, you can go from horizontal to vertical or just a straight line. Always just have a look at the little orange text uh, under the, the current building item and uh, test out the different build modes. You'll, you'll enjoy them. In the early game, your power poles only have four connections. So sometimes you fill them up pretty quickly. Now, instead of breaking things down and having to add another power pole somewhere, you could select your power pole, hover over a power line, click on it, and then move it. And there you go. You've added another power pole without having to break the connection between the power pole and the mine. And you have another pole with a couple more connections that you can use. You can use your middle mouse button to copy items that you want to build somewhere else. Middle mouse button, click on it, and there it is. That applies to pretty much everything, so I can click on that. And that's it. I have, I have added on. Now, if you want to line your buildings up, you can hold control and it will line your buildings up. So, for example, I was to grab this and control there. Now, this is completely wrong. Grab that. Now, if I hold control, I can snap it so that these line up. And you can see the green lines will show you that it's lined up to the splitter and also to the other constructor. And there it is. Perfect. Now, if you want to build something and you don't have anything to line it up to yet, you can decide how you're going to put it down. You can point at the approximate area that you want it. Hit H and that puts it into hologram mode. Then you can go around and you can decide how you want to put it by using the arrow keys to nudge it. And we'll nudge it over a little bit more. That looks like it's nicely centered and it's centered on this side. So now I just click the left mouse button and boom, it builds it exactly where I want to build it. Sometimes it can be a little difficult to decide where to put something exactly. So if I wanted to put this in the middle of the platform, I already know that's that's right. But uh, just from experience, but sometimes you may get confused and go, all right, well, this this looks OK. And then you run around, you'd realize, no, it's not OK. So you have to then break it down rebuild it but you're still not entirely sure so you hit the h button and then you go ah i'm off use your arrow keys nudge it correctly into position yep that's perfect click and it builds and there you go using the hologram is really cool and it's also extremely important when you're building blueprints imagine you've got a row of 20 constructors you have to go through and select the recipe for each one that's a bit of a pain in the butt so you want to try and avoid that now there are a couple of options if you go into the machine there's a place you can copy settings and then you go into this machine and you can paste settings now the benefit to this is that it will also once you have overclocking unlocked uh, it will also as long as you have the power shards in hand copy the overclocking or underclocking settings that you have in place so that's pretty handy but you're still having to go and click on each machine to set that up. So let's say, for example, I chose that one. I can now press Control C, settings copied. Look at this one, Control V, settings pasted. And if I go in there, confirmation, one iron rod, 
from one iron ingot. Perfect, very easy, and speeds things up a heck of a lot. I mentioned underclocking and overclocking, which is very important to set up the efficiency of your factories. So, if you go into a machine, let, let's say, as an example, you, you don't have enough iron rods coming in to make the iron screws, and do yourself a favor as early as possible, try and get the iron screw alternate recipe, because you don't want to be doing this. But anyway, you, you only have uh, five, for example, iron rods available to make screws. That means that you need to reduce your production by 50%. So you can go in here and just say, all right, well, let's make this only 50%. Now you'll be only making, you'll be using five iron rods per minute and you'll be making 20 screws per minute. Now that also brings the power requirement down quite a lot. As you can see, it went from four to 1.6. So it's more than half. The opposite is also true. Let's say you, you had a whole lot of iron ore and maybe you're running out of space and you don't want to put a lot of constructors in. You take your power shards, you can add them, you can push your clocking up to 250%, which means that you're now using 25 iron rods per minute and producing 100 screws at a 250% increase in your clock speed. But that also increases your power usage exponentially. So you want to try and use this as little as possible unless you have a heck of a lot of power available to you. Right, in the early game, you are going to come across hogs. They are going to try and take you out. So uh, you'll have the Xeno Zapper, which you can use. And as you can see, if you get a little bit of high ground, they don't climb very well. So you can whack them like that. As time goes by, you'll get better stuff. Okay, well, I didn't... Oh, he's still alive. Oh. You will get better weaponry, like the Xeno Basher which is also more is also good fun but when these guys charge you you can dodge them or you can just move backwards and hit them everyone will have their own strategy on how to take on creatures uh i find that uh, sometimes with these spitters it's a good idea just to run up and grab them and always take the remains as you go on in the game you will get uh, better mines and those better mines will be able to deliver more stuff to you, which means you need to upgrade. Now, mines you can upgrade. If you've got the material on you, you can just basically click on them to upgrade them. And like with most stuff that you'd like to upgrade, I have access to quite a lot of the belts now. And this is this is a conveyor belt Mark 1. Now, suppose I wanted to speed that up to Mark 2. As long as I've got the material on me, I can just click on it. And it's upgraded. So now it's moving at 120 per, per minute as opposed to the 60 per minute for the Mark 1 conveyor. If I've made a mistake, then I can just simply downgrade it. And there you have it. Simple and easy. Point and click to upgrade or downgrade. Right, so I want to build myself a couple of walls to make my building look a little bit better. But then I realize, oh dear, uh, the middle ones should actually be windows. So let's... Uh, Grab a window and we can press control and I'm missing silica and now I have silica so I can choose my window and I can just press control and it will replace that part and now I have windows instead of walls now you can do that with a lot of building parts and it is a very very handy thing especially if you want to for example let's say I'd like to have my wall inset a little bit so I can build a road barrier and put it over there, grab the wall. Now I could put the wall on top of it, but I want to have it at the same level and I could just put it in like that. But that's not exactly what I want to do because I could just do that on the seam. It wouldn't matter. So let's say I take this road barrier and I put it two clicks in and two clicks across. I grab myself a wall. Now that can go on top of that. But if I press control, it replaces it. Now I have a very strangely put piece of wall. And this is very cool for building, designing pretty looking bases. Completely out of place, but 
there it is. I could also do this with with nudging. So if I went there, pressed H, A, and with the arrow keys, I move it over a couple and bring it over this way. I can do that. So hold down control to replace building parts. To keep your factories looking neat and tidy, it's always a good idea to have 90 degree bends on the belts. And there are a couple of ways to do this. All right, so firstly, let's take it. Let's put it in the middle of a platform and we'll head out in this direction. But now I want to turn it down that way at 90 degrees. I could come back by two, build it, come around the corner onto the middle of this platform. And there we have a perfect 90 degree bend. Another way to do this is to take your belt and instead of going back to, you use your middle mouse button to rotate the stand. Take it forward to. And there you go, exactly the same result. The same can be applied to pipes. So take a Mark 1 pipe, put it down, bring it across, come two back. And there you go. Beautiful 90 degree bend on the pipe. Back to the pipes and take it to there, turn it to 90 degrees, couple of notches in and again, perfectly 90 degree pipe. If you want to delete, it's F and you can delete one item at a time. Just like that. Alternatively, hit F, hold control and you can select multiple items up to 50 at a time that you can delete. If you press control again, you can remove parts that you have already selected just like that. So let's say I want to delete those. Boom, three done all in one shot. But let's say I've got a whole factory like this and I want to delete certain things like, for example, just the splitters or in this case, I'd like to delete this conveyor, but there's a lot of conveyor and there's lots of other things between the conveyors. So press F, hover over the stuff that I want to delete and then apply a filter by pressing G. And you can see it says dismantle filter conveyor belt mark one. And now it doesn't matter where I press control, it will only select what I have filtered. And then I can delete them. Let's say I want to just remove the stands on these pipes. I could press G, control, and it will only select the stands on the pipes. And I can delete them. As simple as that. The filter is a very handy tool when you've got to take down lots of old stuff like your starter base, for example. If you hit N at any time, it will open a quick search. Now that quick search will allow you to find, for example, machines that you may, may want to build. So let's have a look for a constructor. There it is. And if I click on it, there it is. I can actually build it. So that's quite handy. But N will also give you information on a product. So for example, steel beams, it will show me all the recipes that I have available for it. It will even show me the alternate recipes and it will give me more information on the steel beam, lots of useful information. Not only that, but if you press N, it's also a calculator. 12 plus five is 17 and that's actually correct. So that'll help you to work out little bits and pieces on the run. So if you're building a factory, you've got 120 iron and 120 coal coming into a foundry. How many foundries would you then need if they each use 45, so you can divide that by 45, which means you need two full foundries and one foundry operating at two thirds 0.6667 or 66.67 per minute. Very straightforward. Now, while you're out and about exploring, you will be looking for little goodies like this. This is a drop pod and drop pods have mostly requirements in order to open them. Now this one's already been opened. Can't remember what the requirement was, but some of them just need power. 
So it's always good to travel around with enough stuff on you to build a couple of biomass burners and also a little bit of biomass in your pockets. So if you do come across a drop pod that needs to be unlocked with power, very easy to just build a couple of biomass generators, pop your biomass in, and you get your hard drive out. Then you can come into your MAM, and it's going to look different in 1.0 because I'm recording this in update 8, but the principle remains the same. Your hard drive, you have one, I have a couple on me. Um, go to hard drive, scan a hard drive. It takes 10 minutes to scan. And just like that, it is done. And you'll be presented with a couple of options. Now in 1.0, there will only be two options, but you can bank it and then re-roll that research to see if you get another option. So each hard drive will give you four options, basically. This is quite a nice one here, the silicon circuit board. So I'm going to grab that. Now, the cool thing about the MAM is that you can pretty much put it anywhere you want. So if I was to come out here and go, all right, I want to build a MAM because I found another hard drive. We'll put it over here, put my hard drive in. So I'm out on the map somewhere far away from base. Pop my hard drive in, begin the scan. And as you can see, it has started. I can now delete this MAM and it will continue to do the research. And when I get back to my home base, uh, I can pop in here and there you go. That scan is carrying on. So good thing to know. Always carry enough around when you're out there to build a MAM. That way you can get rid of a hard drive. Hard drives don't stack. So quite nice to, to just get it out of your inventory. Okay, in this setup right now, I have global illumination switched on. You can go into your options, video options, and go down here uh, to global illumination. You can turn it off. And that will allow you to see things in dark spaces. But with global illumination on, it is very, very dark. Very dark inside buildings. Good news is you don't need to unlock lights. You could just grab yourself a sign. So let's grab this one. You will need, you will need crystal quartz. We'll put a sign. Uh, we'll just put it over here. And it doesn't matter if it's upside down for this. We can go in, we can select image and find none. Go to the blank one, select. So that's the image gone. We can go to the text, we can take that off. We can set the emission strength to its highest, make it glossy, and then go and select the colors that we want. So, okay, it's the very bottom one. You can select that color, bring this all the way down that way, bring this all the way up this way, select the color, and when you pop out, you are now in a very dark place and you actually have a sign lighting you up. Cool thing here is, middle mouse button, paste, 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 and uh, it will paste with the original settings, the default settings, so you can go control C over here, V, V, and V, and light has been shed. Much better. And it also looks pretty cool. I like the global illumination. This is good for accents on buildings, for marking off the edges of walkways. A very cool addition to the game. As soon as you can, you will land up with full storages. Now, you don't want your machines to stop operating. They must carry on, because if they carry on, you do well. So what you could do is, uh, once your storage is full, put a splitter in, take it to an extra line, like I've done here. I've done this with all of these storage containers. Before them, I have a, a splitter. So now that it's full, it will just split everything off into this. I take it into a conveyor lift down underneath and it goes to here. Comes out, I just put it into this container. It also just basically goes straight through and into the awesome sink. If you go into the awesome sink, over time, you collect coupons by putting in your extra products. And the higher the value of the product, the higher the number. 
each time you get a coupon, it actually increases your requirement for the next coupon. So it's something to bear in mind. You can also use DNA capsules, which is a whole different thing. And when you want them, basically you just print your coupons. Put them into your inventory and then we can pop over to the awesome shop. And this is where we can go and we can spend our coupons on all sorts of things. Signs, lights, extra storages, extra stuff for your logistics lines, different types of foundations, walls, so architecture parts, things that make your buildings look pretty good. And there's a lot of stuff. For example, this walkway has five elements. Modern catwalks, six elements. There's a whole bunch of stuff for the frames, you know, the frame set. So yeah, you do get a lot of stuff out of it and it's very, very cool. This is also where you can get your different materials that you can put onto your walls. It's where you can get your roof parts. You can get decals to put on the ground or on walls. You can buy your factory cart and uh, music and a whole bunch of trophies. You can also get equipment like your coffee cup, uh, health packs. And you can buy all of these. And then you can also get parts. Now, I wouldn't suggest spending your, your coupons on parts. Rather make them. But the facility is there if you like. But yeah, there you go. Awesome. Now, you can customize. As you can see, I like concrete. So I've built lots and lots of concrete stuff. And I'm going to continue to build concrete stuff. Because I like concrete stuff. As soon as you've been to the awesome shop and you've unlocked stuff, uh, if you go into your foundations, for example, I've unlocked concrete, so I can choose the default, which means that this was the default. I can choose that now when I'm selecting a foundation, it will be concrete automatically. And you can do that with walls. You can do that with windows as well. So we can change this to concrete and that gives it a concrete frame. You can do it with these walls as well, concrete. So yeah, a lot of things that you can use, but you're not limited to that. You can change things on the run. So if I press X and I go to the customizer, I can change materials. So for example, asphalt, I can just click on that, drag over these, and now I have an asphalt surface. In the customizer, which is a, a huge topic, it's a video all on its own, but you can also change Colors. Fix it factory swatch. Currently, that is it. I can apply it to any surface and I can apply it to machines. These already have that default. But if I decided that I wanted my factory to have different colors, all of them completely. I know it's getting a little dark now, but if I went in over here and I edited this and I said, all right, instead of orange, I want it to be white. And instead of this funny blue color, I wanted it to be black. I can select that. And it's changed every single thing in my factory. Every building. Every machine. And they are pretty forgiving. So if I edit and I want to load the fix it primary for both of these, I can get everything back to where it was. And there are lots of different things that you can do with the painting and customizing. So that's something that you can research. I will probably be doing a video on it at some point. In time, you will get the blueprint designer and you will be able to create your own blueprints. And uh, there are various layouts that will be beneficial to you. I'm not gonna go with blue, I'm not gonna go through blueprints because at this stage, I believe there's a change coming for the 1.0 release maybe bigger maybe taller who knows we'll see but this is it's also pretty big so this is a episode on its own i just wanted you to know that the blueprints are there you can build blueprints and my tip on this one i suppose is don't bother putting blueprints down here unless you're building a road or a specific platform that you're going to be putting down in various places if you're going to do a setup like this this is a whole bunch of constructors with splitters and mergers it's a very simple setup and one that you'll use quite a lot build it without the foundations because it's much easier to just place it on foundations 
many times you'll be going out in the world and you know what you want to build and you need to take a whole bunch of stuff with you and man you just keep forgetting things well there's a way to solve that if you go into your build menu you'll see a little plus button so let's say in here i know that the build that i'm going to do requires a manufacturer it requires two assemblers it requires 10 constructors it needs lots of refineries and maybe a foundry whatever it might need you click on those you add them in and it drops in on the right hand side of the screen everything that you need so you can come in here and you can scroll through to make sure that you've picked up everything that you need in this case i have i've got ticks across the board and if i want to i can hop in here and edit it and change whatever i want at this stage and you'll see public notes private notes at the top of this uh yeah i'll get to that right now so if you're in your build menu or your inventory and you go across to the side you can you can see it gets you can see it gets like a dark shadow when it does that click on it and you will open your to-do list here you can type in private notes public notes your public notes will be seen by everyone playing on your server with you if you're playing multiplayer your private notes you only you can see and they also give you tags that you can use so you can bold your text by putting it putting your text inside a b tag very much like just regular html you have o seems to be a colored text ob is colored and bold h is a header and then you've got little brackets that you can do that you can actually mark off so if i do that and i put an x in it basically that means that is done so i can go over here and there it is so if i go and edit this list and i take all of these things out and i just have these public notes when i come in here that's there but that's not enough i need some more information so i can do a bold and say power needs to be done close off the, the tag and this should be in bold and there you go but it also means that it's done so i'm gonna have to go and change that that means that it's not done so once the x is there it's done so i can do to-do lists and whatever i need it's quite a handy feature to have in the game just to keep you reminded of things that you might be doing that you may forget about and my very last tip satisfactory-calculator.com this is an amazing resource. It will help you a heck of a lot. There are planners. We can use the production planner and we can say to it, right, I want, I want iron plates. So how many do I want? I want 40 iron plates per minute. But now it's giving me the option with Mark III miners. So we can go to options. We can go realistic. We can go, right, we've only got Mark I. It's early days belts we've only got mark one no overclocking we can select all this no mods so perfect that tells us that we need two mark two miners two smelters two constructors a merger to put them all together and there you got the plates so you can put it into a tree list gives you a little bit more of an indication of how it looks items these are the items that you are going to have so you're going to put in 60 iron ore 60 iron ingots out of that and from that you'll get 40 iron plates per minute can tell you the buildings that you need and the materials that you need to build them and the network graph well you can move it around and it is such a nice tool now even more interesting than that is the actual interactive map and this shows you the entire map of the game we have the different biomes if you hover over them you can see the biome name so that's the june desert this is the rocky desert where i plan on starting my next playthrough because that's the one that I haven't done yet. We've got the Spire Coast up here. We've got Northern Forest. We've got the Crater Lakes. The Terrible Swamp. The Red Bamboo Fields. The Red Jungle. And the Grass Fields down in the south with the Blue Crater. So, there is a lot of information here. And from here, as you can see on the side, we can look for specific resource nodes. So, let's have a look down in this area. You can also change how the map layers look we can use the old topographical look of the map and give you some contour lines that you can see what's going on or you can go realistic whichever helps you the best and you can say all right well in this area i want to know where are 
Where are all the coal nodes? But I don't really want to see the impure, so we'll take those off. So there's coal over here. There's coal over there. Fair bit of coal around here, and there's some pure nodes. Very interesting. So if I wanted to make a steel factory, maybe I could go and have a look at the uh, iron nodes nearby the coal nodes. There's a pure iron node there. There's iron over here, closest to the coal. There's more iron over here. There is iron. Ooh, there's three pures and three pures. Interesting. Although this would probably be a better place for coal power plant. At least at the beginning. You can choose to use this resource or not. It is completely up to you. There are mods available for the game. You can use mods if you like. If not, you don't have to. There are advanced game settings in the game itself, which will allow you to do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do in normal play, such as fly around and uh, get resources, unlock all the techs before you've actually researched them. How you play is up to you. This is a fantastic game. A lot of what you've seen now will be different in 1.0. And that, folks, is my top 30 tips to help the game go a little bit easier for you. As a final note, I'd probably say don't let the milestones push you too fast. Build at your own pace. Get the things that you need and just make it fun. You have so many opportunities to really, really make cool designs, cool factories. Don't get overwhelmed, just have a lot of fun. If you like this video, give us a like. If you want to see more, subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications. Leave me your comments, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have any tips that might help other people. Pop them in the comments so that other people can see them and enjoy your satisfactory experience. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for watching my video. And if you want to see more on Satisfactory, I will be making a lot more Satisfactory content, so... I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, cheers.